Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Donald Trump's 50-point plan for his second term. Uh, now, none of these points were expanded upon in the press release, released August 23rd, 2020. But let's run through what he promises to do. Jobs. He's going to create 10 million new jobs in 10 months. How many times have we been told by Republicans that presidents don't create jobs? Create 1 million new small businesses. Cut taxes to boost take-home pay and keep jobs in America. Enact fair trade deals that protect American jobs. Quote, made in America tax credits. Expand opportunity zones, which I believe is a mix of ending regulations and um, tax incentives in certain places. Continue deregulatory agenda for energy independence. So we're going to be energy independent by deregulating that industry. He is going to eradicate COVID-19. He, he is going to develop a vaccine by the end of 2020. We will return to normal in 2021. Make all critical medicines and supplies for healthcare workers in the United States. And refill stockpiles and prepare for future pandemics. Uh, he wants to end our reliance on China. Bring back 1 million manufacturing jobs from China tax credits for companies that bring back jobs from China. He is going to allow 100% expensing deductions for essential industries like pharmaceuticals and robotics who bring back their manufacturing to the U.S. No federal contracts for companies who outsource to China and hold China fully accountable for allowing the virus to spread around the world. Healthcare. Cut prescription drug prices. No, no, that's not Joe Biden's platform plank. That's the Republican presidential nominee's platform plank. He's going to tell private companies what they can charge or not charge, which is the intervention in the marketplace. Uh, put patients and doctors back in charge of our health care system. Lower health care insurance premiums, another intervention, and surprise billing. Cover all pre-existing conditions. Protect Social Security and Medicare and protect our veterans and provide world's, world-class health care and services. Now, as far as I know, he's been in charge of the, the VA for four years. He could have done something about that. Um, protecting Social Security and Medicare, it boggles the mind that the largest piece of our federal budget and deficits come from Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, and he's not going to touch it. So... Take that for what it's worth. Education. He's going to provide school choice to every child in America and teach American exceptionalism. <sighs> okay. Um, now, I have a different version of American exceptionalism than Donald Trump. Okay, so sort of like teaching religion in schools. It's almost exactly like teaching a religion in schools. Mike Pence took a verse from Hebrews took out Jesus and put in the flag in his convention speech, if you haven't seen that. Uh, so my version of American exceptionalism is that this country is exceptional in the world stage because it was a marked shift towards the individual being in charge of their own lives away from state and central, centrally planned control over their lives. So America is exceptional because... We have we value free market, spontaneous order, and many libertarian values that you are free to live your life as you see fit, as long as you don't hurt other people, steal their stuff. That was the, the, the purpose of setting up the system in the way that the system was originally founded. And it was set up to frustrate authoritarians who wish to control the markets and personal lives. Obviously, that has all been eroded through... Uh, through the last 250 years. But that's what makes America uh, exceptional. In my view, Donald Trump's view of American exceptionalism is Donald Trump. Somebody who is loud and confident and rich with gold plating, Las Vegas, lots of money, wealthy, can buy a lot of things, has the most guns, strongest willed person, and then just flat out pure american propaganda with waving the flag and and never saying anything bad about uh, his version of america but denying that other people with different experiences 
but then him uh, let's be honest white rich and militaristic that is donald trump's view of american exceptionalism in my opinion am i wrong you are not wrong my okay. view of exceptionalism is a little different and it's being able to point out that donald trump is all these things and not be considered anti-american for doing so yeah to be able to disagree with our government and redress and seek for redress of our issues through the government process right that's where we have exceptionalism when you have his view of exceptionalism is basically ostracizing anybody who speaks out against what is considered the government or or the society or whatever you either follow these rules or you, and you do these things and you support the flag and you be patriotic and you support any war that we want to go to because it's all in our best interest or you're a degenerate that's uh, anti-American, you're a commie, you should be hung out to dry. I saw one libertarian podcaster that I'm friendly with say Rittenhouse didn't kill any people, he just killed communists. Yeah. That's the mindset of Donald Trump and where he's leading the nation, and that's just an unconscionable, disqualifying statement, to be honest. The dehumanization of anybody you disagree with. Yeah, uh, and providing fascism. It's the path to fascism. It totally is. Uh, the provide school choice to every child in America. That's not the federal government's job. Drain the swamp. Pass congressional term limits. Now, these were all points from this. This is redo stuff he didn't get done, tried to do, and then reverse course on, as you heard in the last episode. Pass congressional term limits. End bureaucratic government bullying of U.S. citizens and small businesses. Expose Washington's money trail and delegate powers, delegate powers back to peoples and states. Drain the globalist swamp by taking in international organizations that hurt American citizens. He tried to seize like COVID illustrates that he's full of shit. Like Larry Hogan had to hide and protect his masks and PPE from the federal government so they wouldn't come and seize them. The governor of Maryland literally had to have armed guards around his PPE because the federal government was trying to steal it to send it to other places or, or keep it for themselves. Uh, Donald Trump wants to defend our police, fully fund and hire more police and law officers, increase criminal penalties for assaults on law enforcement officers, prosecute drive-by shootings as acts of domestic terrorism, bring violent extremist groups like Antifa to justice, end cashless bail and keep dangerous criminals locked up until trial. I can't tell you how all how much I disagree with all of that, uh, which is basically illustrated and why Joe Biden was wrong on our episode on Joe Biden's record. If you want more expounding on that, but let me take on the domestic terrorism and bringing Antifa to justice. And the problem is that is a complete rejection of classical liberalism and the, the principles of the American founding, which again illustrates he does not understand American exceptionalism. If you are in a riot, if you were in downtown Kenosha two nights ago and you were standing there and doing nothing, you were not a criminal. When you hit somebody, break someone's stuff, or, you know, I mean, committing fraud, your beliefs are fraud, but the, you were not a criminal by association or holding an ideology. What Donald Trump is basically saying is, I want to take the the uh, indefinite detention of innocence, the denial of due process, the the just flat out murdering of Muslims. He wants to import that to America and bring again the domestic policy is going to be the foreign policy of John McCain. You remember when we all got really outraged at the Fusion Center in Missouri in like 2010 that labeled. Ron Paul, libertarians, don't tread on me flags. Yeah. Those people were domestic terrorists and needed to be watched. Mm -hmm. Remember when the Obama administration said we were domestic terrorists and, and everybody needs to be paid attention to in the libertarian tea parties? Right. Like, you, you don't, you have, the, the American legal system does not, it assumes you're innocent until it can pr prove you guilty. 
But this mindset is that if you are there, you are guilty by association and that you have to prove your innocence. It's a complete flip of the American legal system. And on the policing stuff, the, the law in America is already greatly tilted towards the police officer in an altercation. All a police officer has to do is say, I feared for my life. Mm -hmm. And they have the ability to met out the death penalty for anybody that is committing any kind of crime or even if it's a traffic stop. That could be the death penalty if the cop just says he feared for his life. And there are crowds that will go along with that <laughs> and think that it's okay for somebody to be murdered. There are literally libertarians saying it's okay for two people to be murdered by vigilantes because of guilt by association. We have no idea if the people that were killed by Kyle Rittenhouse committed any sort of crime whatsoever. Right. And so how do you have a functioning society where it's just okay to kill whoever you don't like? That is barbarism. That is not the American system. That is not America. That is not classical liberalism. That is not libertarianism. That's barbarism. Yeah. It's not human. It's inhuman. And so it's just another form. It's, it's the same mentality on the right that socialists, the far socialists, will, will produce. And I, I cannot disagree with it enough. And I'm not going to call out specific people because I'm not trying to beef, but I just think that that is an insane, inappropriate, dangerous way of thinking that rejects everything this country stands for. How many decades have libertarians tried to point out all the people who are in jail right now on trumped up charges, lies by the by the police, mm -hmm. police planting evidence, police uh, planting guns? To, uh, you know, he's, they carry around a, a burner gun just for that purpose. So if there's a shooting, they throw a gun in there. Oh, he had a gun. How many decades have we been trying to call this information out, and now we're just going to throw it all away? Because we want to get the commies. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't understand. Drop good. It's called drop good. It, it's one thing for private citizens to to have that mentality. It's a whole nother thing for the weight of the most powerful government on earth to engage in that kind of behavior. You don't want that. <laughs> like that literally, if I have a disagreement with Donald Trump as a libertarian podcaster, am I a domestic terrorist? You know, it's just, it's it, it, a lot of what's going on with the scaremongering by the Trump campaign and the, and the, the Repu Republicans reminds me so much of the 2003 lead up to war, but we're doing it to American citizens and it's really frightening and it's really problematic. And it's not going to end well if adults don't start stepping up and saying this, this we're not going to allow this in America. Um, next point, end illegal immigration and protect American workers, block illegal immigrants from becoming eligible for taxpayer funded welfare. Bill Clinton already passed that in 1994, I believe 96, uh, block, block them from becoming eligible for healthcare and free college tuition, mandatory deportation for non-citizen gang members, uh, dismantle human trafficking networks in sanctuary cities to restore our neighborhoods and protect our families, prohibit American companies from replacing the United States citizens with lower cost foreign workers, require new immigrants to be able to support themselves financially, which is okay. Uh, innovate for the future, launch space force, establish permanent manned presence on the moon and send the first manned mission to Mars. Like we can afford that shit. <laughs> that's like there's he somebody a in my card. Yeah. That, he's got that, he's got a U.S. black card, right? Mm -hmm. I live in a very I, I don't live in a poor apartment complex, and I don't live in a rich apartment complex. And there's a neighbor that has a Bentley. You live in an apartment complex, dude. Like that's, that's the kind of mentality. Okay. Build the world's greatest infrastructure system. Win the race to 5G and establish national high-speed wireless internet. Oh yeah, let's put the government in charge of the internet. That sounds like a great idea, especially when they're spying on all of us and they want to label people as domestic terrorists. Let's give them the uh, ability to manage our wireless network and our internet. Good idea. No problem. You'll get great service, just like you know, if you go to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and you want to get service, right. or the IRS and you want to get something taken care of. That's that's the prompt care that the government will give you. 
Imagine the internet goes out and you have to call the government to fix it. You think you'll yearn for the days that AT&T was in charge of your shit. Uh, partner with other nations to clean up our planet's oceans. Clean, continue to lead the world in access to the cleanest drinking water and cleanest air. American first foreign policy. Stop endless wars and bring our troops home. Get allies to pay their fair share. Maintain and expand America's unrivaled military strength. Wipe out global terrorists who threaten to harm Americans. Build a great cybersecurity system and missile defense system. Okay. Uh, defend American values. Continue nominating constitutional Supreme Court and lower court judges. How'd that work out for you with Judge Kavanaugh and Judge Roberts? <laughs> Protect unborn life through every means available. When somebody says, by any means necessary, it really starts to concern me. Defend the freedoms of religious believers and organizations. Support the exercise of Second Amendment rights. Um, so some of that we agree with, some we don't. Um, as, yeah, Matthew points out a contradiction. Stop wars and build and expand military strength. Uh, and these aren't policies. They're vague goals. How are we going to do that? How are we going to pay for it? How's that going to work? Why didn't you do it the last three years? It doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah, you know, so Jacob's, Jacob's exactly right. These all seem like ideas that can be fleshed out in the free market. There's a few good ideas presented that would be best done by a free market, and you are totally right. Um, you know, they're, they're, we're not going to get into it, and we don't have time because I don't want to spend my whole life talking about the presidential election but you know, there's the COVID response. There's the stimulus package that was passed that uh, basically put twelve trillion dollars into the American economy. Six from a, a stimulus package and six from the Fed. Reduced spending. Spending's gone up every single year. Um, there's so many different things uh, in a president's record of any type uh, that uh, you know are awesome. problematic. He wants to protect American workers with with tariffs and it just makes people have to pay more for goods and services. All right. right. And with the, oh, okay. yeah. I was going to say like, and, and COVID has given a good, it's a good obfuscation of smokescreen of probably what would happen to manufacturing and the Midwest this, this summer, you know, with those tariffs in place. 